Hey, what's up? So if you've been following the channel, on the last video we set up the WF2850 for sublimation printing using chipless firmware and refillable cartridges. So in this video we'll be adding assist to the printer so that we can increase our ink capacity and not have to refill the cartridges so often. So in this kit we have the ink tank, the assist cartridge, four to 30 mil syringes with the four inch long needles, these tubing clips, four of the plugs for plugging up the existing refill cartridges, and some extra washers or elbows. So we'll start by putting ink in the tanks. I'll be using Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation ink, but you can use any high quality sublimation ink or pigment ink with these kits. Now this particular tank has three chambers, the main dosing chamber or the main fill chamber sits here in the front. The air chamber is in the middle and the priming chamber is here in the rear. First we'll fill the priming chamber. To start off we'll draw 30 milliliters of ink and insert it into the fill hole of the priming chamber. We'll plug the priming chamber and tilt the tank forward to move the ink into the lower part of the tank and force the air out into the upper part. We'll remove the plug again and continue filling the chamber with another 20 milliliters of ink or so and replace the plug. We'll empty the remaining ink into the dosing chamber. And from now on, you'll refill the ink in the dosing chamber only. Once it's primed, there's no need to add ink into the priming chamber unless for some reason the tank is emptied all the way out. And repeat these steps for the rest of the three colors. And once the tanks are filled, we'll prime the cis cartridges. We'll remove the plug at the front of the cis cartridge and insert the syringe into the hole Make sure the ink shutoff is open. And pull on the syringe and you'll feel pressure and the ink will start to flow into the cartridge and fill it. Now I forgot to remove the dosing chamber plug. We need to keep that open for now so that we can empty the syringe into the tank when we're finished. I'll continue letting the cartridge fill up until the ink flows into the syringe. I let about 10 milliliters flow into the syringe and then I'll remove it and place the ink back into the tank. We'll replace the fill plug on the cartridge and repeat for the other colors. Now we'll install the system inside the printer. And first we'll go ahead and turn the printer off by pressing the power button and selecting yes to turn the printer off in the menu. Inside the printer there'll be a gear to the front. We're gonna rotate it clockwise or forward until the carriage lock moves down and out of the way. This will unlock the carriage and allow you to move it freely inside the printer. We're going to install the T-style tube clip to the inside of the printer on the lower plastic rail. Don't install the clip on the display panel. We're going to move the print head carriage towards the middle and remove the refill cartridges and then install the cis cartridges. We're going to move the carriage all the way to the left and then install the tube into the tubing clip with the black ink tube showing at the top. Then we'll move the carriage all the way to the right and adjust the slack. Now you don't want it too loose where it bunches up on the inside and you don't want it too tight where it won't move all the way to the right hand side. We 
Once we get the slack where we want it, we'll clamp the tube down with the other tubing clip in the kit. We'll mount the tank to the side of the printer. We're gonna wipe that down with rubbing alcohol and then line the top of the bracket up with the cutout for the scanner unit. We'll attach the ink shut off to the front of the printer and slide the tank onto the bracket. And now the sys is installed, but before we forget, we're gonna go ahead and plug the vent holes in the cartridges that you removed earlier so that they don't leak when you store them. And make sure that you unplug the vent holes at the top of the tank. If they're left plugged in, they'll create a vacuum and the ink won't flow. Now we can complete the install by running some head cleaners and some purge files to ensure everything is in working order. This to ensure that all the air is out of the lines and that everything is in working order before we start our sublimation prints. And for now, we're going to be using copy paper so that we aren't messing up the more expensive sublimation paper. First, we'll knock out the three head cleanings. Then we'll run the three purge files. Here with the yellow, you can see where at first there was some issues. Looks like maybe there was some air in the line. But as the print progressed, the quality got better and the ink started to flow properly as the print finished up. Once we finish the last purge file and get a good nozzle check, we're ready to start printing with the sublimation paper. We'll load that up and get some images ready. I had some 8x12 blanks that I had some minor blemishes on them, so I decided to make some signs that we're going to place along our local recreational trail. People really seem to enjoy them as they walk the jog by. So there it is. We added the sys to the 2850. Now this will definitely add more ink capacity to the printer and allow for uninterrupted printing. Just make sure you keep an eye on the ink level and don't let it drop below the last line on the ink tank and you'll be good to go. Again, thanks for checking out the channel and watching the video. Until next time, good luck and good night.